Hey guys, it's Danny. Already time for another spotlight of a beautiful and quite amazing orchid. And I know some of you have been waiting for this video, so here we have it. In front of us today, we have the beautiful Phragmopedium popoe. And oh my gosh, isn't he wonderful? Well, I'll show you a little later why. So first, let's get the terminology out of the way. I purchased this orchid as Phragmopedium popoe. But if we look at the Orchid Web website, we can see this orchid goes under a few different names, which I will attempt to pronounce but I'm sorry if I will get it wrong. One of the names is Varsaviti, the other one is Varsavitianum, and the last one is Caudatum. Now, whether this orchid is a species renamed on its own and it's different from the other ones, I'm not entirely sure at this point, but I think in stores you will be able to find this orchid under all of these three names, or at least something that looks very, very similar to this. Since I purchased this orchid under the name of Popoe, I will refer to it as this, and as you might expect, it is an orchid species, it is not a hybrid. And can you believe this thing actually exists in nature? Now let's get the obvious out of the way, why is this orchid so special? Well, because it has some of the longest petals, if not the longest petals in all of the orchid world. And to give you a better idea, let me pan down. And there we go, that is the full extent of the petals. Now I will measure them and I'll show you how much they measure right now, but I have to say I did see Phragmopediums with longer petals than this. If we check the orchid species website, under the Caudatum name we can see that this orchid can produce 75 centimeter long petals. On a forum I've also found a grower which managed to obtain 85 centimeter long petals and that's striking. The length of the petals on mine is 43 centimeters at the moment. Every day they tend to grow a little bit more, I'm not entirely sure when they will stop. Definitely growth has slowed down and Phragmopediums have a bad habit to shed their flowers without giving any notice. You will not see them fade away slowly and then fall off, you will just find them falling on the floor one day and that's that. So they're unpredictable, I decided to film it now so I don't lose this display. Now the petals are not the sole focus point of this orchid, also the sepals are incredible incredibly long. They are longer than my hand, my palm as you can see, but overall the display is magnificent. This is a huge flower for the tiny little plant that you see there. Now, if you didn't know, Phragmopediums are a sort of slipper orchid, let's call it like that. They are related to Paphiopetalums, but they are a little bit different, generally care-wise. Phragmopediums don't usually have mottled leaves, they are usually green, and generally they do require more water than Paphiopetalums. You might notice that I am actually keeping this orchid in a little bit of water and right now the level is pretty low, I would need to add some more. And this is because many Phragmopedium orchids actually grow in super moist locations and environments. So for the heavy waterer out there, I think these orchids are perfect. You cannot really overwater this orchid. You might be able to suffocate it, of course, the roots still need oxygen. Running water does provide this oxygen, but constant water and air will not create problems for this orchid. It will actually make it thrive. So this is the very first time that I'm actually growing a Phragmopedium and I have to say, I love it. I have two more, one of them you don't know, but I will present it this week. So I'm really excited to grow these guys and so far, so good. So let me get you in a little closer as we talk a little more about this orchid. This is a sympodial orchid, but it does not produce pseudobulbs. Similar to Paphiopetalum orchids, it produces fans, but there is a rhizome connecting them. Just like Paphiopetalums, each fan only blooms once and it produces a terminal spike right from the crown. Once a fan blooms, it will not live indefinitely. In a few years, it will die off, but don't worry, the plant itself will definitely not die because as you can see, my biggest fan already has three new growths, which are pretty big. And that's a lovely trait that I discovered with all the Phragmopediums that I currently own. The fans start to produce new growth before they actually mature. So when this orchid is in bloom, in a matter of a year or maybe two, there's another fan ready to bloom once again. And in its return, the other fan will start to create new growth by the time it matures and blooms. So with Phragmopediums, it is very possible to get quite the specimen and bushy plant relatively fast as long as you have a mature fan. Growth rate though, it is a very, very slow grower, which is a downside of the Phragmopedium and both the Paphiopetalum. So I think if you're interested in purchasing a Phragmopedium, I would definitely invest a little bit more and purchase a fully mature Phragmopedium if you want results right away. But if you don't have a problem with waiting and you do enjoy growing something from a very young age, I 
think this indeed will be worth it and the reward is absolutely fantastic. All of the Phragmipediums that I saw are really beautiful, but I have to say the Popoli with its long petals has always been on the top of my list. The colors on the flowers are not striking. The sepals are greeny yellow, while the pouch has some dark maroon, dark red accents to it. Inside the pouch there is a lovely dotted pattern, but overall the flowers are a bit greeny, yellowy and brown, and as you can see the beautiful petals are pretty brown. Another interesting thing about them is that they're a little furry. One side is pretty smooth, but the other side is absolutely furry and beautiful. It's really soft to the touch. When the buds start to open, there is no clue that the petals will get this long. When the bud opens, the petals are pretty short, but instantly they start to elongate, and every day you will notice a few more centimeters added to the length. Mine took about two weeks to reach to this size. Right now, it's slowed down a lot, so I really don't think it will grow longer than this. But if I look at the plant, I can see it's pretty, pretty young. This is the first blooming it ever produces and usually with orchids the first blooms might not show the full potential they might lack certain features as the plant matures and grows into her own things will only get better so i'm really excited and hopeful for the future even with this display i am absolutely in love with this orchid and as you can see i have three buds generally this is a normal flower count per spike the pictures that i saw with this orchid showed two to three buds Maybe in special cases you might get four buds. I've yet to see one, or at least I don't think I've seen one, but of course, as the plant matures, each fan might reach maturity at the same time with a different fan and you can have a wonderful display. Of course, you will need to be patient. As I was saying, this orchid glows very slow, but oh my, the wait is seriously worth it. The sepals on this orchid are twisted, as you can see, and we have one in the front and one actually here there are two in the back but they're actually merged some orchid flowers do merge their sepals or even their petals and this one is one of them i really love how they tend to twist like this also how you can see the veining in them it's really really attractive while the petals are these two long formations in the front and also the pouch, which is the lip, it's a modified petal. The purpose of the pouch is to trap insects, but not to eat them. This is not a carnivorous plant, nor are the paphiopetalums actually. The pouch is intended for insects to struggle a little bit and in their struggle to get out of the flower, touch the pollen, touch the column and pollinate the flowers. Now the beauty of this orchid absolutely compensates with the lack of fragrance, which might not be everybody's priority in the list. For me it is because I like fragrant orchids, but when it comes to this orchid, really I don't care. Phragmipediums generally are not fragrant, they're not known to possess a fragrance, there might be a few species that might have a fragrance, I didn't encounter them yet, so don't expect fragrance from this orchid, but definitely expect a beautiful, beautiful show when you have it in person, it's really really hard not to fall in love with this orchid. Returning to the orchid itself, the leaves as I was saying are pretty deep green. As I am reading this orchid does require quite a bit of light. Phragmopediums in general they're not high highlight plants such as Cattleyas or Vandas but some of them do require a little bit more light than others. I would say that generally if you have enough light for Phalaenopsis orchids you can do great with Phragmopediums as well and not to mention Paphiopetalums. Now, as you can see, I have a bit of yellowing leaves on my plant. I purchased it this way, so I'm not entirely sure what caused them. Maybe it was light, maybe lack of some nutrients. So it's up to me right now to experiment with it and figure out what it likes, what it needs, how it grows best. But I will also mention that Phragmopediums in general like a very clean water. The roots are brown and fuzzy, very, very similar to Paphiopetalum orchids, but they break just so easily. All you need to do is stare at them at the wrong way and they break. I'll add in the description down below how I repotted my Bessay hybrid so you can see how super brittle they are so I can see how repotting this orchid might be problematic. Whenever we need to repot from organic medium we need to remove quite a lot of the old medium and this process can seriously damage the root system so I can see how inorganic medium is actually preferred when it comes to Phragmopediums and especially when it comes to repotting. So for me of course inorganic is the way to go with these orchids. The Bessay that I repotted is doing great and wonderful so I don't think I'll have issues and with this one when the flowers decide to fall I will definitely go in and repot it in inorganic as well. 
So alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. I am seriously, seriously liking Phragmopedums and as I was saying, I do have two more and maybe the collection will expand. I don't know. I need to see how they handle the summertime first and then I'll see what to do. So far so good. My Phragmopedums are actually looking spectacular. Do you guys like Phragmopedums? Would you like to expand and talk more about them and discover them and grow them? Let me know in the comment down below and thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down, subscribe to my channel for daily orchids and plants videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye! Great news! The Speciosa phalaenopsis is starting to mature one of its buds. I'm really excited about this orchid because I had the Tetraspa C1 in the past. It bloomed for me so I know the flowers pretty well and I really want to know if this orchid is different. With these two species it's always a bit confusing if they're the same or not so I'm really looking forward to see if the flowers are actually different on the Speciosa.